Hello everyone, this is Game Frost, and today we'll be doing another great tutorial video where today we are going to be doing L Speed. Now, this video was requested by Sensword, so thank you for telling me that. Now is the time to review L Speed. Now, what L Speed is, is another alternative to Kernel Auditor. I think that's what they call it. No, a Deator. Um, sorry for that. Um, this alternative is literally the best app I ever used out of all of them. And it's really good, but you, you need a rooted device. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going straight to L Speed. All right. Um, in this video, I will include one benchmark, and that will be um, the the SD card benchmark because I have an SD card integrated to my uh, uh, to my phone. So um, you can skip the configuration if you like. But yeah, let's get started. So we have the main tweaks. We have boot scheduler, which is disabled. Um, you can um, leave it enabled so that. Um, every 30 minutes or so, it could actually clean off your RAM uh, without, you know, doing it um, manually. So that's a really good way to clean off your RAM. Um, disable debugging. Don't do that because if you're, if you feel like debugging your phone using AD, ADB or anything on your computer, um, 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 don't enable this option. Kernel panic. You have to always enable this because it's very important. If your if your if your phone system is being unstable, well, what this does is that's going to revert back to its normal settings. So keep that on. Um, allow higher YouTube resolution. Um, what this does is that um, in your phone. So imagine you have a 720 um, P phone. What you could do is that you could change your YouTube's resolution to 1080p, 1440p, 4K, or anything like that. It's really good. Uh, monochrome and all this other stuff you could just leave it off for now um, but it's time for the battery now in the battery you can see your battery information and everything now what you need to do is to leave the battery improvement on this is a good way to um to imp help improve your battery's lifespan the next thing you should do is to um let's see. Uh, the next thing you should do is leave those optimized. Actually, you know what? Leave it on. This, this is a really good way to um, help your, um, your phone's battery um, lifespan um, better because um, if your battery is 15% or low, uh, what it does is that the phone uses um, way less system resources without um, degrading performance. So that's a really good way um, to conserve battery life without losing any um, sign of performance. Now the next thing you could do is go to CPU tuner. The thing that everybody wants to know. Now I won't be enabling any of this because you know my phone is kind of weird with CPU tuning. Every time when I put on performance, um, my uh, my phone gets really hot. But what you should do now, if you're a performance game or a gamer type guy, um, always leave it on performance. As execution interval, click on three minutes. As CPU optimizer, click on performance. Now, if you're the one that wants to keep it balanced with workload and gaming, just leave everything balanced and keep the execution interval three minutes. Now, if you're basically the battery type guy, the one that, you know, wants to keep this system, you know, as, you know, just leave it on as much as possible. Just leave everything on battery as well. So when the CPU optimizer does, it's gonna optimize your CPU to only use battery saving features. So your system will be a little bit slower, but it's worth it for to save battery life. Now, we're going to LNet Optimizer. What this does, and this is my favorite, because it literally boosts up your network speeds. And a matter of fact, let me go ahead and install speed test right now so I can show you the difference. Alrighty, so we are now in speed test. So before we go to the tuning, we're going to check out our basic internet speed. So I'm running on Wi-Fi right now. I'm not using my data connection. So let's press go and let's see the results. So you can see that our ping is 11 milliseconds and the jitter is 5 milliseconds. And my average internet download is basically 17.4 um, megabits per second. So let's see the other one, the upload. Um, you can, as you can see, my upload is really, really slow. For some reason, like most cable services, their uploads are really slow, but their download speeds are, are fast. So this is my average, which 
really sucks. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe other people have slower speeds, but I call this average. So now we're going to go back. Uh, let's see if I can actually like, okay, so we have our results in. So that's basically um, the first test without L speed. So if we go back to L speed, now we're going to change everything. So net buffers. What this does is that it changes. I don't know, but if you put on if you put on big, it will literally impact everything. It will impact your battery life, but it will, like it will literally increase performance. And it happens for every uh, for every network. So you can put 3G, Wi-Fi, LTE, anything. So if you put on big, uh, you might see a change in your battery life. So be aware of that. RIL tweaks. Leave that on. Net TCP tweaks, you got on net speed plus is very essential. It will literally boost your internet speed like crazy. Uh, LNet optimizations. Now for DNS optimization, what this does is that LSP searches for um, a DNS server that's really fast. Um, I'm not. I'm leaving this off because I already have a DNS, so I really don't mind. But if but if you guys don't know. Um, how to find a DNS and, you, and you're looking for a, a fast one with a click just click this button and it will just search for one for you so since we got all of this let's see if there's any uh, difference now I don't know if this actually works but we're just gonna check so we're gonna connect alright so the ping is 10 milliseconds the jitter is 3 milliseconds but something is wrong it seems that the download speed is kind of slower so for some for some reason, um, it seems that the only difference we can see is basically the ping and the jitter. All right. Oh, 250. No, 248 for average. But we saw 250 though. I did see a 250. So here are the results. We can see that the download speed is 16.8 and the megabits per second is 2.48. So this it's like a three. It's like a 0.3 increase, but that's really good. We're gonna do one last test, but this time I'm going to um, activate DNS optimize optimization. Let's see if that works. So we're going to try again. Last test. I want to see if there's actually a difference. Ooh. Alrighty. Sorry for the background. Oh no. So as you can see, I am actually in a room and the problem, why is it so slow is that, you know, Wi-Fi is basically like, so there's a door and it blocks the internet speed and you know, there's walls and everything. And we all know how Wi-Fi works, you know, the signal transmission, everything, and sometimes get interfered. So you, so there, there might be a difference and there sometimes might not. So the only thing we can see is basically a difference in ping, jitter, and upload. But I don't know about downloads. It looks like it just decreased download. But this is all for you. If you guys think it's good, then you could um, leave this on. Now the next thing we could do is go straight to I.O. tweaks. Now this right here is um, basically tweaking your storage of your storage. Like you can tweak your SD card or your internal storage. Now before we start these tweaks, we are going to go and do a uh, SD card benchmark. Let's see, where is that? All right, A1 SD bench. In this benchmark, this benchmark is really good if you're like upgrading your SD, your SD card or something, or you know, checking your storage because this um, it will literally um, sorry about that. It will literally tell you your speeds and everything. So uh, let me pause this real quick so I can show you guys the results of the first benchmark. Alrighty, so as you can see, the ones that are highlighted in yellow are my benchmarks um, before we um, start tweaking the um, L speed. So basically, my benchmarks for the SD card is basically the read is 38.65 megabytes per second, and the other in the right is 7.24 megabytes per second, which is really, really bad. Now, for my internal, or like the internal storage for the phone um, the read is 194.23 and the write is 43.51 not so bad but not so good as well so now we're gonna go back to L speed and tweak it so the schedule tuner um, what this does is that 
it's it's uh, L Speed's intelligence system will find an optimal source to tweak your system to to give it um like a balanced optimal state as well with performance. So I'll keep that on. Um, also, um, leave SD tweak on. This will um, tweak your SD card. Um, I/O blocks optimization that deals with your internal storage. Put down performance. Um. Also, uh, wait, please wait until I execute the scripts. Also, uh, the I/O. This right here is really the best option. This will um extend your uh, read and write speed, so put that on. Partition remount, put that on as well. Disable I/O status. Do not. I repeat, do not do this. It will somehow crash your system, possibly. So now, since we did this, let's go back to SD um, A1 SD bench and let's see um, the results. So we're going to benchmark one more time to see if there's actually a difference. So tune in. Alrighty, so we finished two benchmarks. Now I'm using a different benchmark called Andro Bench because the other benchmark tool was not really good because it shows that the write speed was zero. So I chose a different one. So this one is the um, is the internal storage. Now as you can see, now this is a drastic drastic improvement. You can see that our se sequential read is 236.52 megabits megabytes per second, and sequential write is 51.48. Now let's see um, A1 SD bench to see um, our results. So if we went, so if we go here, uh, let's check here, um, and we go uh, my model. All right, so you can see that. Wait, which one was it? Alright, so this one right here, you can actually see that there's a difference. Um, um, the internal you can see is 197, but this one went up to 236. Now for the SD card, it went from a, the sequential write is 41.2, I mean 41.62, and 7.38. And if we check here, um, the SD card was 43. And this one is 40. Okay, so the sequential read must have went down. Actually, no, this is the SD card right here. Yeah, that's the first one. That must be the second one. So the one that's 35 minutes ago is basically the base bench. So this is 38. It went up to 41. And the 7.24, it went down. It went to a 7.38. So it was basically a small increase. So as we sit, as we got this out of the way, sorry for my you know, speaking because you know this is not scripted. I just speak like all over the place. So right here we have the RAM manager. What this does is that it manages your RAM. So if you're basically a gamer, you can uh, click on the game so the so it'll lit, so the device will clean off your RAM as much as possible. So you could have all that RAM so you could game. So if I just click gaming, you could click balance. Balance if you want to keep it balanced for optimal, you can multitasking if you love putting a lot of programs up. Um, keep it for multitasking. Low RAM flag. Um, what this does is that it optimizes. That's what it says. And um, yeah, it it does it does disable fancy effects like let's say animations. It will disable that and it will disable other Android effects. So, so, so your RAM could not be consumed that much. Um, disable multitasking limitations. I haven't seen this. But I actually did not know. But this thing um, does, when you click on it, it will disable performance limits. Like every Android device have a performance limit. So if you turn this off, it will disable the performance limit so you can so get more performance out of it, but it might cause system instability. O OM killer, don't um, don't leave that checked. Virtual memory tweaks, um, put it on to performance. Um, swapping this tendency, just leave that as default. ZRAM and heat optimization, leave that on. Uh, stupid ads. Uh, ZRAM optimization, leave that on. What this does is that it's optimized your RAM. It, yeah, it optimizes your RAM. Um, entropy. Oh boy. Now this one is 
is the one that people mostly talk about, the entropy. So in kernel audio tour, we can see that the entropy actually makes the system lagless. So if you put it to uh, aggressive, it will make the entire Android system lagless. Lagless. You can actually feel. You can actually feel the responsiveness. You can feel the smooth UI and everything like that. Is and it's really really good. I'm gonna leave it as default because they said that the higher you increase it, the quicker your battery will drain. And it's actually true. Sometimes it can make your phone hot, and sometimes it doesn't. It it, it depends on what model you have because every different. There, I mean, every model is different. So. I'm going to leave this one off. Uh, sorry for that. Now, um, you could skip cleaner, but I mean, it, all it does is just clean, you know, stuff. Do not clean the case partition or wipe the Davlik um, case because, you know, it might cause system instability. But um, F trim, um, always leave it on 30 minutes. What this does is that it trims your system so it could become lagless, just like entropy, but it does it every 30 minutes. So, this concludes the I guess. Um, if you guys like this quick tutorial, even though it's 16 minutes, um, if you guys like this quick tutorial, um, please leave a like. Um, I am aiming to get at least maybe 5 likes and that's it. Um, and thank you Sensor for suggesting this video. Um, I know that, you know, I actually just realized that, um, the, the video for the, for speeding up your Android, um, device has, has reached 1,000 views, which is really, really good for an early start. Um, if you guys like this, um, you can leave a like and uh, you can subscribe and leave on notifications. And if you're actually generous and if you want to consider to donate... Um, that's fine by me. I'll really be I'll really be grateful if you donate. I'll add the donate link to the description of the video and Yeah, that'll be it, you know um, So thank you guys for watching. I will post more tutorials Maybe gameplays because you know, I'm not really good But you can I, you guys can also check out my twitch my twitch is twitch.tv slash um, my um, YouTube's username, but it's not in um capital so Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a great day.